I think we all may be making a noise, aren't it? Okay. Hi, welcome to Facsimile. I'm Ryan Brown, author of Dear Coffee Buyer and your host. I'm excited to cup some coffee with you today. I've ground each of the four samples in bowls here and I'm heating water right now. Subscribers, I hope your samples are ready. If not, feel free to pause, catch up. You'll wanna use a ratio of one gram of coffee to 17 grams of water. My cups have 11 grams of ground coffee in each and I'll pour 187 grams of water uh, on top of that. If you're not a subscriber, facsimile is coffee tasting for serious enthusiasts. Improve your skills, calibrate scores, and gain insights about varieties, origins, and processing. Every month, we send you four carefully selected, skillfully roasted samples to cup along with us and other coffee experts. You can subscribe in the link or links below. Speaking of experts, I'm excited to announce that our guest cuppers today are Petra Vesela and Willem Davis. And if we're lucky, and I think we are, uh, we'll be joined by their well-behaved and delightful dogs, uh, Maya and Jenny Brown. Petra is a green buyer, barista, cafe owner, world coffee event certified judge, coffee educator, and author of two authoritatively renowned Czech language coffee books, a book about coffee and a big book about coffee. Gwilym is a barista, roaster, and trainer who's worked at the likes of Monmouth Coffee and opened Proof Rock Cafe in London. He's also your 2009 World Barista Champion. Together, Petra and Gwilym own the Naughty Dog Coffee Roastery in Yulove, Czechia. I cannot encourage you more strongly to enjoy the images and videos on their Instagram. It's at the underscore Naughty Dog. That's N-A-U-G-H-T-Y Dog. Petra and Gwilym, it's so nice to have you here with us today. Thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to cup these with you. Hello, it's really nice Hello, to be here. Hello, nice to see you. Yes. One other thing, uh, our very own Scott Rayo is in the YouTube chat right now. Uh, he's hanging out, he's uh, fielding some live questions, but then also uh, if you have questions for myself or Petra or Gwilym, or all of us, or uh, any of us, about anything in the world, please feel free to send it there. And we will have time to answer as many as possible after we finish cupping here. So, Guillaume and Petra, you have water uh, at a pretty good temperature. We have that. ground coffee in front of us. Yeah. Yep. Should we, should we dive in and start, start smelling these dry grounds? One. Perfect. So in a normal cupping situation, you wouldn't openly discuss what it is that you're smelling. We're going to break that rule today, of course. So I, I encourage both of you and I'll ask you both by number to just tell me what you're smelling in each of these samples. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So we start with number one. Number one. Like very, very light. Um, it has like caramel characteristics. I can, I have some raisins as well. Mm -hmm. It's very low volume in the intensity. Say more about that. Well, I'm not a big, one of my strengths is not fragrance. Yeah. Aroma. So uh, I don't spend much time on it. Sometimes 
to be honest, it just just smells of coffee. <laughs> like coffee. Other times, especially, they, especially the first one. Yeah. So the first one is more towards that just taste smelling of coffee. So the volume's low. There's some raisins, a little bit of caramel, nothing floral in there, nothing that tells me it's going to be really acidic or bright, fruity coffee. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I definitely am smelling the caramel and and I don't smell a lot more there right now. Mm -hmm. What about two? This is definitely stronger. Intensity stronger. It's like some, it's, it's definitely fruity. It's like going to the like forest fruits kind of. Mm. I couldn't tell you what kind of fruit it is. Caramel as well. Yeah. The second one. Yeah, I'm getting a dark chocolate or, or a malted chocolate, and I'm getting that fruit as well. It feels kind of like a, a mash of different berries sort of fruit. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But yeah. definitely, well, like, it's, it's a definitely a pleasant fragrance. Mm hmm. Okay. And I, yes, I noted that it's a more intense fragrance as well. Yeah. Three. This one is definitely we're going up again yeah. in the intensity yeah okay i don't even done that on purpose but it this is more citrusy and mm -hmm. on side of like the red fruits like almost like currently like the red uh -huh. currant. yeah there's something buttery and I'm getting a lot of vanilla from the fragrance of three. Okay. okay. I'm getting, I understand the buttery, the vanilla, not so. Let's talk about four. Mm -hmm. I would say that four is completely different to all the previous ones. <laughs> It's a very strong floral, floral note. Mm -hmm. A lot of flowers like jasmine and also like bergamotty, earl grey, earl grey. This is the complete opposite to number one. Yeah. Like complete other end of the scale. There's a lot going on in there. Mm -hmm. It certainly is the opposite of number one. I agree with the, the mix of florals and fruits. A coffee like this, I will, it often reminds me of a candied ginger, the, the fragrance of, of this coffee. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, do you have hot water? We do. We do. Are you, are you, uh, are you ready to pour? We are ready. Almost. Perfect. And I am going to, I'm using 11 grams of coffee. So I am going to use 187 grams of water. Mm -hmm. We are using 10 grams of coffee and 165. 165. Of water. Okay. So like 16.5 ratio, like one to 16.5. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We tell our our audience, our cuppers, that the most important thing is that you brew them the same across the samples so that you have, you can, the whole point of cupping is the comparative aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this timer again. Last time it, it errored out on me at around 13 minutes. It's not going to this time though. No. It's not going to. <laughs> We've got a timer too. One, six, five. Ah, one, six, five. We normally do um, six grams and a hundred grams of water. 
and that almost fooled me. <laughs> mm. uh, for this, we thought we'd uh, go up to our 10 grams. Because when we cap in the in the roastery, we we cap a lot of coffees, and um, we found out that the six grams per hundred is just like it's just enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, um, it actually helps with our kettle. It means we can do more. Oh, for sure. Kettle. Why I mean, the... do more. You know, once I've, I mean, yeah, that is, I, I mentioned earlier that my, my biggest concern is, is running out of water because there's, there's no easy, so there's no good solution. And especially even if the thermal mass of the kettle is losing it towards the end and you're doing the last few drops of water for the last cup, you know that it's dropped five degrees. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so I mean, in, in general, if you if you can heat up more water than you need, there are there are benefits uh, in in the results in terms of the consistency and uh, sustaining your your heat in there. Okay, all right, Gwilym, it's your time to shine. We've got some aromas here. I can smell them now. Do you smell before you break as well? No. No, you don't. I, okay. I, I'm not a big smeller. Just, <laughs> I, I mean, I smell it to see if there's anything there um, that is going to give me a clue as to a roast defect or something wrong with the coffee. Or, but ultimately, it's what I'm tasting in the cup is what the consumer is going to taste. So that's the main focus for me. Obviously, if I was buying container loads of coffee, I'd be doing every little uh, test available, but I'm not. Right, Usually, sure. Like, like the, the dry aroma really fast. We, we just try from a sample. You have a basic idea what's going on on the table then. And the wet aroma, sometimes we don't even smell. We just wait for the taste. Usually, we're running around doing other tasks. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think I think you can get a lot out of cupping from. I I do get a lot from fragrance, mm -hmm. and then I think if I had to pick just two two moments of cupping, I would pick the fragrance and then the last sip just before they've lost all of their <laughs> all of their heat. Yeah. Okay. I get the I get I feel like I get the bookends of what's happening there from from the whole cupping. The least effective bit for me is the smell during the break. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just don't do that. Most oh, okay. Time. Okay. How about you, Petra? We after the break, I sometimes smell, but um, I I rather smell the dry aroma first. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how many of these ritualistic aspects of the cupping process might, we, we believe that they are important steps, but it's, it's unclear and I don't know what the analysis is on whether or not they have a significant impact on purchase or on, on purchase decisions, let's just say. We All right. Four. Let's break. So still smelling that caramel in number one. Yeah. Definitely some nut as well. Something a little bit nutty about it. I got a little bit of peach. Oh yeah. Okay. Taste the wet and caramel. I'm starting to get some some Chocolate. cherry or black cherry from two. How about you? Anything in two? More. When I smelled the, the grounds, it was more of a citrusy rather than... Oh. On number two, what about number three? Can't remember. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I agree that there's something, there's a baking spice aspect in three. 
It's definitely and, yeah. and yeah. four. Yeah, more spicy now. And what about four? Very floral. Oh, yeah. It's almost like <laughs> ah, ah, ah. that's very, very floral. I mean, there's two two distinct ones in my head straight away. They're definitely very floral. So there's like uh, a lot of jasmine and lavender as well. Yeah. And yeah, you lavender. both you've both cupped a lot of coffees. When you smell something like four, what what are you expecting? Yeah, it's going to taste really good. Yeah, nice. that it's going to be tasty. <laughs> and I'm going to enjoy it. Okay. I mean, sometimes you can smell, and it's completely different to the actual taste in the cup. But this one, I, I kind of, I've got a feeling I know exactly how this will taste. This one, I don't know. Number one, maybe. Yeah, I, so, I mean, the, the reason I ask is I agree. And it's, of course, there's a lot that happens in the cup, but it's, it is, I mean, we were just talking about the value of, of, of smelling. It's interesting how much you can anticipate from what you're smelling at that stage of the cupping. I think that's important because one of the problems on a cupping table, especially when it gets more than four or definitely more than six, um, I get lost. Mm -hmm. Being in a big city for the first time, I, I'm a little bit lost. So at least you go down and, and you've got a fixed point that you can find your reference from. And kind of. A yeah, yeah. So these being clean, um, we're, we have probably about 10 minutes until they're at a good temperature for us to, to dive in. I'd love to know how you take notes and score when you're evaluating green coffee. Mm -hmm. Um, in general, we cup actually for three reasons. First, the first time when we do the cupping, when we are choosing the green beans to, to buy, then we, we cup in the roastery, like the production cupping, like what we, what we roasted to check the quality, how, how did we do and what we should make better and so on. And third, we cup with people on the trainings. And that's mostly like beginners and coffee enthusiasts. So in general, we are trying to keep the cupping as simple as possible. So we, we have like six point system, which is um, very much based on the score, the, the WBC, which we were mm -hmm. both, uh, both judging and we find it like the fastest and the most useful. And so we, we, just, we just basically score it from zero to six. And um, yeah, and we use smiley faces. Like we don't write difficult uh, notes and just just some basic flavor descriptions and the description of the of the tactile, and um, and then we put the smiley faces. Yeah, so whether it's a smiley face or an unhappy face or <laughs> an ecstatic face, it's basically from one to six. But okay. Three, okay. Three would be about good, four very good. Nothing and below. So, three. yeah. Tell me a little bit more about how you how you use it. Um, so, what might be a, a coffee that you would purchase versus a coffee that you might not purchase, or a coffee that you would consider or recup or or write to your supplier never to send them to never to send you a coffee like that again. Like, what? Where's the? Where are those lines? Yeah. Number two is uh, recup. Number three is uh, use try it as a V60 as well. Recup it later, see how it's changed, and try it as a V60. Okay. But the three is like the minimum for us to to get the coffee or or to sell the coffee. Like it's okay. a cup we are or we kind of like, and we are able to drink it, we are able to finish it. Number two is like, oh, we are almost not able to finish the cup. So that's something. <laughs> yeah, you, it's the cup that you leave on the side and you kind of, you go, oh, I've never finished it. And you kind of forgot about it. And it's like, eh, it's just coffee. So at the so end we have a scale of six, but we basically start on the, on the three. On the three. 
Ah, I see. Okay. So you kind of start at three and you, you bump things up or down from there. Yeah. Okay. And what would you, um, what would components that build up those scores? Like what, what are the things that you're thinking about? Are you thinking about the, the body, the sweetness, the acidity, all of it? Is it's it, it all of it yeah, together? It's, it's very difficult in some ways to explain um, yeah. because when we're training people, we keep it very, very simple uh, when they come to the trainings. When we're doing it ourselves, there's a lot of experience and a lot of training experience we've had as judges and coffees we've tasted. Everything's good. And it kind of, it assesses it. So, so actually when somebody like you says, what is it? <laughs> but, oh, I kind of find it difficult to explain. I could just revert back to the score sheet and start talking about taste balance and quality and intensity. But my honest answer would be it's all kind of whirring away in there. That was much better at systemizing it. Right. The my uh, please let me let me tell you a story about what why I think you like it is that the cupping sheet is probably the score sheets out there are to a degree at least unnecessarily complicated. And you are intentionally simplifying the process to something that is working for you. Mm, yeah. Also, but we're coming from a place of experience. Uh, so we're not just making right. our, our own little score sheet in the head. It, it comes from experience. And then we simplify as easily as possible for the people coming on the trainings straight down to you now get them thinking about acidity, sweetness, um, and do they like it or not? And why not? Right, yeah, yeah. Just getting their mind thinking. And when you communicate with suppliers, do you communicate your six-point scale or do you use a 100-point system or, or what happens there? We... We we have um, we have like uh, very good relationships with uh, some of uh, the companies we we buy the green beans. They kind of already know what kind of coffees we like and which is the best. And yeah. then they send us samples. Usually we have the samples like when it goes from the farm before um, it's shipped to the company, and then we get the samples again after it arrives to the warehouse. So we, we have like two options to, to try those coffees before we purchase it, which is amazing. So mm -hmm. we kind of work mm -hmm. on the reserve system with most of the coffees we have. 90% of the coffees that Petra gets will be naturals or honeys. <laughs> yeah. So some of the official score sheets don't kind of work <laughs> Scott, so well. Scott, don't listen, okay? Don't listen to this, yeah? <laughs> no, but... It the thing, the thing is why we actually purchase like a lot of naturals and honeys is not just because we like it, uh, but it's also because of the customers. Mm -hmm. The Czech roasteries are kind of mixed and they, they, I think they buy more, more uh, washed coffees and there's nobody who buy, who is buying as many naturals as us actually. And so that, gives us the diversity that we are different to the other roasteries and those coffees are selling really well. So we, it would be silly not to buy coffees like that if they, if they sell well. And of course we try to, to purchase like the ones which are like really clean and, and um, with, with distinct and specific flavor notes and yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's what makes the dog naughty, right? Is all those naturals. Um, and so, so something important that you said was before you went to this simple cupping sheet, you first learned how to use the, the, the more established, like that, probably the SCA cupping sheet and, and maybe others as well, Cup of Excellence, for example. Yeah, the last week, um, if any of your viewers have not seen it, it's well worth scrolling to where uh, Charles Wabinski talks about his cupping form. And kind of from that school, the way he talked about his cupping form, it was all clicking in my head, made complete sense to me. 
Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah, and it's another example of someone who has learned all of the the kind of prerequisite, the basics, the fundamentals of cupping and scoring, and then says, how do I make a form or a, or a system of evaluation that fits my needs, what I need from this situation? Yeah, do you have in your mind, is there a way to translate or do a conversion from the six point system to the 100 point system? Of, but no, I don't really care. Yeah, many, yeah. Like it's not, it's not who my customers are, and it's we know when I, I know what an eighty-five is, and I, I know what a sort of an eighty-seven. I know what an, when I experience a ninety. I kind of we know, but it's it's it's, it's not our world. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, I'm already I'm in trouble because my hobby for the last 20 years has been coffee. And I've been working in coffee the last 20 years. It's my life has grown this strange little bubble. And I spend most of my time trying to get out of that bubble. Um, and having our own system kind of keeps me away from the language uh, and the systems of the specialty coffee industry. It kind of just helps drag me a little bit more towards the customer yeah yeah absolutely i understand but That's i do understand the, the need for understanding what an 85 is and what an 82 is that's very important yeah yeah let's let's dive into these uh so as before let's discuss what you're tasting and to the best of your ability i i I think it would be helpful if you could externalize and, and talk out loud about how you use the six point system and, and what you're tasting and, and how you would score that or, or how smiley it would be. Um, yeah. I think that would be, it would, it would be fun for me. I, I'm looking for, I've been looking forward to this. So um, let's do it. I have a question before we dive in. Yeah. When do you normally start cupping? It's not 17 minutes, 12 or? You know, I, I don't usually start before 15. It's too hot for me. Yeah. What about you? We're uh, like 12, 13. She's 12. Okay. I'm 15. So are these, are these like, are these as cold as ice to you right now? No. no okay. It's a, we usually dive I've in. smelt it, so I know what they taste like anyways. No. <laughs> just, just pretend like this is your second pass. How many passes will you usually do? We usually do three. Like yeah. first, we, we just go fast the first time. Like just the, you know what's on the table, like get the coffee taste and, the, and all the flavors in your mouth. The second one we, we really start eva evaluating. Okay, so we're cupping number one. Or actually, let's just go through all four because I see that's what, I think that's what we're doing. Let's just go through all four and then, and then come back to number one and discuss it. Okay. Like, even though I say things are going in my head, I kind of still take notes. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Not necessarily on all the coffees. Yep. Some coffees are not noteworthy. Okay. Are you, do you feel comfortable going back to number one and, and talking about what we taste there? Yeah. Um. Definitely ha has like medium to high 
acidity, which is pleasant. Yeah. It has a medium sweetness. Um, the body is kind of like lighter body, lighter to medium. There's a lot of stone fruits. I would, I would take almost peach, some citrus like lime. And it, it has a little bit chocolatey finish, but it's like very gentle. It's not like bitter, it's more sweet. <laughs> Okay. What about you, Gwen? There's nothing for me to say. Um, <laughs> that's that's okay. One the the way my mind works when I'm cupping uh, is I'm thinking about taste buds. The flavors are not the thing that are coming to the forefront. I mean, with this, the flavors came because I couldn't ignore them. But right. I'm, taste balance is a big part of it for me, and then the the feeling in the mouth afterwards like what's staying there what's disappearing is it drying is it still juicy what what's happening yeah and then, yeah and then like would i would i be happy to sell it is the next thing even though i'm not selling it it's kind of still yeah the thing that comes into my head what's my face you would do with this one this is um this is good 0.5, good 0.5. Yeah. It's kind of, it's a nice, so, nice, simple coffee. Acidity is not too strong, even though you said medium to high. It's not too sharp. It, it's packed up with sweetness. I would say it's almost a four, which is okay. like, which is like very smiley face. <laughs> okay. We should have. Uh, Done them and done this each time. Yeah, so I, I, to me, I appreciate your your nice comments. I'm I'm a little bit harsher on this one. It's to me, it's a little bit greenish. It's a little uh, vegetal. There is a sweetness. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of uh, sugar snap peas, like a like the sweetness that you'd get from us a, a pea. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting that. In the grinding it, um, the beans were hard. They were hard beans. Um, and I kind of, and I smelt some sushenki, uh, like biscuit cookie yeah. thing in the fragrance, but tasting it now um, with our water and setup, it's 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 not green. Okay, you give this a four. Uh, five. Yeah, just under three five. Just under four. Okay, I'm gonna call it three point five. I liked when you said good point five. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I would probably settle at around right now on this table. I would probably settle at an eighty-five on that on the on the one hundred point scale. Uh, that kind of matches. Okay. Which is us. That's, that's helpful. We will, you know, Gwilym, we will have a conversion by the end of this cupping from <laughs> six point to the 100 point. Okay, what about two? Two coffee. Mm -hmm. I, it's very sweet. Yeah. The, it's missing body. The body is body, very light. It's very, yeah, very low body, which is kind of, it's got the sweetness, but the, the acidity is almost one dimensional, but not in a bad way. I, I hear you on that. Backing it up. It's mm -hmm. simple caramel. I, some citrus, but like caramel. But if I was selling it, I would have to, there is the caramel, but I would have to, I'd have to be pushing that acidity for people rather than saying caramel. They might not be used to. How about score? It's difficult. It's, it's kind of three, difficult. Three, definitely. I would say it's, it's good. 
it passes the test. I'd be very happy to sell this. And okay. uh, I'd be very happy to drink it. Uh, can we come back to that? We'll, we'll taste it. Absolutely. I will, I will share some of my comments, which is that it's sweet. Yeah. I think it has nice acidity. Yeah. What I, what I find about this coffee is that it hints at a lot of things, but they're muddled. They, there's not, there's not a lot of clarity to the cup. They're not, it's not, it's not that it's unclean in a, in like a overripe or a fermented way. It's, it lacks clarity of what flavors it's conveying in the cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would probably give it an 86 just based on the merits of its a sweetness and acidity, which I, you know, are two that I zero in on when I'm cupping. Oh, that's, good. that's good to hear. Um... I, have to, I, I have to say that for me, this is a pleasant cup to drink, but I know that maybe for the customers is too, it's kind of weak. Mm, okay. You, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. I enjoy, it. I enjoy that cup. I sometimes I, I like to drink coffees which are not so strong. And I would prefer to drink it personally than number one by the choice. Oh, okay. Can you elaborate on weak, Petra? That goes to the the body, and to, like to the structure, what it feels in your mouth. Yeah, it's the, the mouthfeel is... It's empty. It's like it's, it's em very, empty very, light, than, yeah. very rather, light and empty. Rather than being an enjoyful tea-like structure, it's empty. There's an empty mm. wateriness to it somehow. Okay. But the sweetness in there, I'm kind of being drawn back to it. But then again, I can always brew it with a higher ratio. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm, I'm looking forward to coming back to the word weak because I think you'll, uh, yeah, I'll, we'll come back to that. <laughs> let's, let's talk about three. Not used to, not used to cupping, drinking so much washed coffee. <laughs> Um, well, we, we got our one natural of the year out of the year on the first uh, facsimile. I'm, I'm joking. We'll, we, we'll definitely have more, but. <laughs> um, this one definitely has like the highest acidity, which I'm enjoying. It has sweetness. It's chocolatey in the finish but definitely the acidity on, is on the stronger side. I would say that's the strongest acidity from all three up until now. And the most enjoyable acidity, but it's a little bit on the... Unripe, a little bit. Yeah, that tomato mm. acidity. Mm. Oh, interesting, okay. I'm, uh, uh, tell me more about that. Don't know. I just vomited out the word. It's <laughs> yeah, like, no, that's uh, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. No, it's like it's not like the. It has the sweetness, and so you generally you expect if there's the sweetness, then there's some acidity. There's some kind of juicy thing going on, but it's it's missing the juiciness to me. That okay, yeah. It it leaves that it leaves dry finish at the end the acidity sort of more of a, a mildly unripe red berry mm -hmm. but like very so, young red currant and on the six point scale 2.5 as well you say 2.5 no 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 3.5 oh, 3.5 okay and i've got it Got a tiny bit of dryness in my mouth. But it's, there is some juiciness there. I, 
for me, this one is more enjoyable than that one. So yes. it's it's like it's, it's more enjoyable than that one. It has the same score, but for different reasons. I would be I'm higher than Petra. You'll be on four. Yeah. That would be my that would be my afternoon coffee. Mm, interesting. So you you're at a you're saying you're at a four? So somewhere between a three point five and a four. A four. Okay. My my first impression right at the front of tasting this was something that was toffee and nougat like to a degree that I was concerned that it might be overly dry or nutty. But I found that in the finish, it had enough interesting herbal and citrus zest flavors that it, it kind of resolved nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I you, remember that we're also used to cupping, drinking naturals. Yeah. So we kind of the, the opposite to a lot of the specialty world. Well, I mean, you're just, you're just saying that you are for sure going to come back onto the facsimile show when we have a table of honeys and naturals is what you're saying. Of course. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Right in. I'll, I'll have, yeah, my, uh, my people will contact your people. Um, really enjoying it more as it's cooling. Yeah. Likewise. Likewise. Let's talk about four. Oh, good. Number four is, is really strong in flavors. I that they are very distinct and easy to recognize. Yeah. yeah. Like, for example, I can say that this coffee, if I would give this coffee to a complete beginner, they would be like, wow, what is that? It's like, it takes like, like, a, like floral tea. They would almost not believe that it's a coffee. Yeah. And they would be excited because they could clearly identify the flavor. It's not a, maybe it's something, it's no, it's definitely yep. floral. Yeah. I mean, I think every coffee professional has those moments or those coffees where they remember that they connected deeply with, with an actual flavor note that was not the same as the word coffee, that it, it, coffee tasted like something that was not coffee even if yeah. it's a bad experience, but especially if it's a good experience. <laughs> yeah, there's a, it's same as what I smell, I can kind of taste the jasmine and a um, little bit of the lavender and definitely yeah. the bergamot. Yeah, the bergamot is- Like nice. going to the Earl Grey tree, uh, Earl Grey, uh, Earl Grey tea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every floral, every floral citrus zest sort of region, um, I think is in here. Yeah. The, now, this is an example of coffee that has, it has that light body, but it's not weak. So Petra was talking weak as in there's something missing yeah. here. This is full, but it still has a, like a gentle texture. A gentle texture. But it's standing, yeah. holding it. Yeah, so it's very structured acidity that is yeah. catalyzing all of these interesting flavors. Yeah. What about fruit? Are you, what, what kinds of fruit would you describe are in this cup? Definitely citrus. Yeah, citrus. But then Yeah, when it was when it was hot, I distinctly tasted a a, a tangy orange flavor. Mm -hmm. Uh now it's a little bit more lime for me. 
Yeah. Yeah. We don't get very good limes in Czech. Mm, okay. So. Oh, I like it like a very good lime. But under the florals, and even there's there's even something that reminds me of pear or kiwi, something like a, a, something in that area. I know those are two very different fruits, but um, I, I have been bouncing back and forth between those notes. What would you, how would you score this on your six point scale? This is making me, making me very smile. I would say even five. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd be up at five. Okay. Yeah. I would score that on the 100 point system. I would score this an 88, five, mm. maybe an 89. Mm -hmm. I would want to cup it again. I think we're slightly uh, higher than you then. It's a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Maybe 89 is right then. 89.5. Well, I think we're slightly higher. Um, is there anything that we want to go, any that you want to go back to before we find out what these are? How are we doing for time? I have no idea. Yeah. We're fine. We're fine on time. We're rocking it. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to taste them all again, actually, because we can also taste them as I as I tell you what they are. Or would that ruin your perceptions? No, no, no. Ooh. I'm excited to tell you what they are. <laughs> I mean, with the two, we I, I think I know. And with the other two, I'm I'm not sure. Okay. Mm. Number number one. Yeah, now, now I'm getting green. Yeah, now I'm getting green. Mm. And it's not just green, it's the heavy on the big biscuit. Oh, in the finish, the biscuit, but I'm getting some of the green now. Never got it before. So one is El Mirador. It's a Cantillo variety uh, produced by Edgar Garcia Osa. He has a farm in Divino Nino Suasa Huila, Colombia, at okay. 1,500 meters above sea level. And okay. the, the, uh, this coffee was imported by Osito Coffee. And the Cantillo variety is, it's, um, it's kind of this weird variety that popped up in this small area. Mm -hmm. um, I happened to buy coffee from his neighbor who is also related to him uh, many, many years ago at Stumptown and snapped a picture of this. And it kind of looks like, imagine putting tiger stripes onto a pink, uh, like Bourbon. Um, wow. and, and yeah, and so it's just something that's popped up there and they've separated it. And, and this, is, this is that coffee. Um, I think I, this coffee has suffered a little bit from the, the, the time in transport. Yeah, is uh, is a lot of what you're getting. I mean, but it's still a good, a good coffee, and um, I think we got we we'd have got Colombia yeah. for this. Yeah. I, what what yeah what notes stood out to you that make it that make it similar to other coffees from Colombia or from Wheeler, Colombia? Wheeler's usually the sweetness. Yeah. And the acidity. Yeah, and that. But it's, it's also it's, like with the Colombian washed coffees, they are, to me, they taste kind of similar. Like it's difficult to, to divide them between each other. It's, it's, yeah. just, it's, it's coffee. With Colombian washed coffee, you very often say it's just, it's just coffee. Nice coffee. Right. It's a nice coffee. I, I love coffees from Huila. It's, it's one of my very favorite areas. Also, it's gorgeous. Let's talk about number two. I was actually competing with Huila coffee. Yeah, I competed with Huila. Wait, say that again. What was competing? I, I competed once. Oh, right. Uh, it was with a coffee from Huila. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, they, I mean, they make delicious espresso also. Like they, they, they can contribute. They, they hold the body while giving you the high notes and that uh, that you need. Yeah, that's, yeah, smart. I think we've got uh, two. 
I think we, we, we know what number two. Okay, tell me. <laughs> we think it's decal. I don't know how you figured that out, but that is correct. And probably two, decaf. two is uh, a decaf from Insa, Colombia. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a mix of Katura, Colombia, Castillo, Tipica, uh, grown 1,700 to 2,000 meters above sea level by the Aswar Cafe Producers Association. Um, so this is in neighboring Cauca, Insa is in neighboring Cauca. Um, mm -hmm. This is also a group I happen to uh, to visit a lot in my Stumptown days. Stumptown bought a lot of coffee from from Kauka. So it's an uh, it's an ethyl acetate yeah. decaf, where a naturally occurring ester that you can find in uh, fruits and fermented sugars um, is specific to and binds to caffeine, so that you can remove it. This was imported by Red Fox coffee merchants. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice decaf. It's a nice decaf. It's a, it's a, it's a cup I would drink. What was the tell that it was a decaf? It's the beans. Yeah. Yeah. It's when you when you see them, they have a different color. They are much lighter, I'm, and they have like a funny noise when you have them in your hand, and they they have a different noise to to other coffees, and yeah, a little bit shiny, and it's also the it, the, the cup is it's kind of like a very light cup and mm -hmm. probably because of the process of the of removing the caffeine so that it's not as strong in flavors so when she says weak i think in one way petra is getting to that um it might not have extracted as much as the others oh, okay yeah yeah it's got that feeling but I'm definitely enjoying the, the sweetness of, yeah. of this tea cup. So in a, in a, this being an exception, when I typically cup for real, I will do all of my, my bowls, I'll do all of the grinding, and then I put different colored stickers at the bottom of the cups to match them with the sample bags, which I then put far away. And then I scatter the bowls all around. And when I cupped this, I had no idea that it was a decaf and I made the decision that this was a coffee that was nice enough that I wanted to in, uh, cup with the facsimile cuppers. And of course it was, you know, sugar on top that it was also a decaf because I thought it would be a fun opportunity to share a really nice tasting decaf with, with everyone. Good. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Three. Oh. Difficult. Difficult because we think we know, but it's not a. But it's. <laughs> it's it's got that African. Okay. So are we close? <laughs> okay. Okay. Are we on the continent? Are we on the right continent? You no, know, we like the first taste would be a Kenya, but it's 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 not a it's not it's it's not a classic Kenya. And the beans didn't look like Kenya either. So is it what what is it about it that that make you makes you think it's a coffee from Africa? The acidity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm gonna surprise you then. <laughs> this this coffee is from Elvis Teneo Rafael. It's a mix of Katura, Bourbon, and Katwai, grown 1750 to 1950 meters above sea level from El Diamante, Jaén, Peru. Okay, Peru. Well imported, done. very high elevation though, uh, imported by Falcon Coffees here in the US. Oh, really? That's really interesting. Yeah. We actually have some Perus from them, but of course they are natural. Yeah, we have natural <laughs> Perus. So. Right, yeah. Um, I, I'm guessing that there's really, um, there's no wrong guesses about uh, this last coffee. This last coffee is Bichon Dimo. It's a mix of heirloom varieties from neighboring farmers in uh, the Denbi Udo Kabele of Shakiso Guji, Ethiopia. It's grown about 1850 to 2050 meters above sea level, and it's washed by brothers Faisal and Hakim Yonis um, and imported for us by Traboka. Very nice. It's yeah. Very yeah. Nice. Ethiopian. I would be happy drinking nothing else for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Truly. 
it actually for for the Ethiopian it, it almost has like the uh, like the geisha qualities almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. The florals. It it tastes better than many. Yeah. Do you both have time for some Q and A with Scott? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a long time. Perfect. Perfect. So he'll join us here in a second. Um, I have a couple of questions for you first. One is, uh, I, I get to ask the first Q&A. That's, that's kind of the rule here. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you recommend to people who want to improve their cupping skills? I think it's important to, to cup as most as they can and to cup with people who understand coffee. So to kind of absorb and listen and, and um, the next time when they, when they hear those notes they heard and, and then they will connect it like, okay, oh, I might have tasted that before. Oh, that tasted like blueberries or yeah, this was like more chocolatey, strawberry something. And like, like through the experience with other cuppers who are cupping longer. And when they're cupping, there's a certain language to cupping. And so to listen to that language and identify the flavors that match those words, but don't get hung up on the language too much. Use what is relevant to you, your culture, your neighborhood, and your own experiences, not just this international coffee language. Yep, absolutely. So is lime a no-go in Chechia? No, it's just then if you, if you buy 10 limes, two or three of them will be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a little worse than the ratio out here, but uh, who would you both like to cup with? Who would you be excited to do something like this with? I, I have no idea. <laughs> I was thinking about this for a long time and I'm really bottled. I, I would like to cup with some of the people that I've cupped with in the past. Mm. Uh, not specifically anybody really. And uh, I wanna see how I've developed as a coffee professional and they follow different routes and how they've developed. Um, and I want to see how we were together many years ago, but where are we now? Are we still seeing the same way or have we developed differently? Willem, just as this was starting and I introduced you, Scott texted me because he thought that I mispronounced your name. So. This isn't a question, but can you just tell Scott that I actually did my research and I pronounced your name correctly? You did very well. Nobody pronounces <laughs> it right. Scott, you have no idea how much research goes into this. Yes. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> it's fine. I, I refuse to say uh, Rayo. Can't do it. It's nah. too <laughs> touche. <laughs> it's Rao. It's like in Europe, it's Rao. I find it really hard to maybe, maybe if I'm in the States, I will have to say it. I know I, it's um, Rayo, but I do really appreciate when people say your name kind of like a cat, like Rao. Scott <laughs> Rao. <laughs> uh, you're going to start one of those annoying uh, Instagram memes now. Oh, boy. Oh, I mean, it was <laughs> happening anyway. I, I was already working on the Photoshop for it. So, <laughs> so nice to see you guys. Nice to you see too. you. Th thanks for doing this with us. We really appreciate it. I really um, enjoyed the experience. Cool. Awesome. Sorry about all the washed copies. We'll, we'll, we'll try to find a natural next time. <laughs> that is the first time I've had four washed copies next to each other, or <laughs> actually having four in a cupping. It's been a long time. I'm... So, uh, yeah, we have a girl that works with us who uh, likes washed coffees. So uh, that's been widening our world back again. This is different. Now, is just Scott frozen or is it yes, us? It's just, it's just Scott. Is he, is that one of his things? 
he well he goes into a catatonic state and but the what happens is there's these bursts of brilliance that come after the the after his frozen state freeze though he looks very good on that <laughs> No freeze. I've seen worse faces on his. Uh... This smiley face is like a four point five yes. in our scale. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay, Scott's going to come back in a second here to um, to let us know about any questions from the audience. Oh, um, and it's I not have... too late to throw a to send a question in. I forgot there was so... an audience. Oh, there's an audience. Yeah, it's not just it's not just oh, the three of us. Your dad. Wait, say again. Not just your father. Right. Yeah, my father, Scott Rayo. Yeah. No, it's oh, oh, my, oh, my actual dad. Yeah. I mean, Scott Rayo is kind of like my coffee dad. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't see him coming back yet. Um, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about. So you mentioned brewing a V60 of of certain coffees at certain scores. Tell me, like beyond cupping, how do you evaluate coffees that you're considering for purchase? Do you want to? It, or? It's kind of the same, like with the cupping. But because through the V60, it tastes different than, than in the cupping. So it's like the V60 is part of our decision because this is what the people will do at home. They will most likely not do the, the cupping. They will drink it through V60 probably. Most, most of our customers uh, use percolation, not immersion. Mm -hmm. so, um, sometimes you find things hide in immersion and they become a little bit more apparent in, uh, through filtering. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And sometimes it just really shines. And it, it's, a, it's a nice, happy sort of uh, results, but yeah, other times you shows something that I have not picked up. I, this will sound stupid, this, this is stupid. I never purchase a coffee without drinking a cup of it first. It doesn't necessarily, I don't necessarily need to brew a separate cup, but even just drinking like out of the cupping bowl towards the end, I, I, it just gives me a different experience of, of having that coffee than I get from slurping out of a spoon. No, I agree. I can, in the past, I very much enjoyed a coffee when I've had two slurps, three slurps, but actually sitting down to drink a full cup is a completely different experience. Yeah. Interesting suddenly becomes a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Okay, um, Scott. Sorry about my connection yet again. Um, no I, seem to have, I seem to have crashed the internet at my bed and breakfast where I'm traveling. Oh, wow. So there, there were no questions, but there were a handful of comments I'd like to share. Yeah. Um, particularly about the decaf. Um, a lot of people, a few people, of course, were surprised it was decaf. A lot of people noted that, like Petra, it, it was weaker. I mean, I mean, decaf does extract very low compared to regular coffee. So it was, I'm sure, a lower TDS and, and decaf tends to be a little bit lower in body. Um, a lot of people commented that it, that it seemed to lack bitterness and that, and that kind of little light bulb went off in my head that I, I think decafs generally are less bitter. I mean, they're, they're sort of less of everything, but, but there is, you know, along with the sort of slightly indistinct flavors in decaf, I feel like that there is less bitterness. And I'm wondering if you, if you all agree with that. Yeah, we do. I didn't notice it, but I do now that it, that you've said that. Mm. When we were talking taste balance, we weren't mentoring bitterness. Mm -hmm. at all. And um, mostly because there was very little present. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And here, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think a lot of us maybe maybe aren't tuned into something like that, like does decaf have less bitterness? Because, because most of the bitterness we perceive comes from, let's say, bad roasting or, or dark roasting. Um, but in a situation with with four like clean roasts, like suddenly it is it is kind of noticeable that the decaf is lacking something, and it is it is bitterness, and that's kind of good and bad. You know? I I always heard that decafs were difficult to roast. We recently purchased one, um, and uh, I really enjoy roasting it. It's very oh, very yeah. easy to roast. Yeah, yeah, they're the easiest to roast. Actually, they're they're they never crash. They're they're very manageable. Okay. They don't need much gas. You know. 
I think when people say something is difficult to roast, it, it sometimes means that they have a system and it didn't fit their system because it's too different than what they're used to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, uh, Gulam, I really like, like that, that you focused on, on taste balance um, and, and would you sell it? Because I think those are, those are kind of the two big things. That's the macro considerations, you know? Yeah, for me, taste balance is the thing that a customer, that taste balance is the thing that means you can put something in your mouth and keep mm-hmm. it there and actually enjoy it. Flavors yeah. Yeah. are like the last, the last yeah. thing. You know, it, it made me think about how when you hear consumers talk about specialty coffee, they, they never talk about in depth about flavor notes or, or the kind of things that, that we talk about together but they talk about sourness, they talk about bitterness, and they talk about roast level, essentially, whether they mean to or not. And, mm-hmm. and that's, really, that's really all about balance. Mm-hmm. I think that's what they care about and, and what coffee professionals are sometimes not paying attention to because we all, we're all trained to, to tune into what most consumers would call sour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Um, as a side note, I think it's funny when baristas get all like, heard about people calling coffee sour because it, it is sour. It's just that we it like is. it, you know, but, um, but objectively it's, it's got a lot of sourness. Um, uh, but I would say I would question this, like, because it doesn't have the bitterness, it's mm-hmm. actually that that's the pleasant thing on it. It's, it's yeah. had, what's really, really strong sweetness. Yeah. I mean, you, you could drink a, a liter of it and, yeah. and it's, it's, it's very pleasant. You know, it's not a, it's not exciting like number four, but it's, it's yeah. like, you could, you could just drink it all day and not complain, you know? Exactly. Um, hmm. Interesting that you thought number three might be a Kenyan. I found that very interesting. Um, and, and Ryan's, Ryan's very good at finding Central American coffees that, that have African-esque qualities, yeah, I mean- you know? By looking at the beans, you knew it wasn't the Kenyan. Yeah, yeah. But it had that in the same way that I knew this was a Colombian. It's like you you drink enough of them and you get it something that triggers in your yep. brain. But yep. yeah, it's very unsure. Yeah. So I want to know: Are the dogs going to make an appearance or not? I feel like you know that's uh... people okay. want to see Maya and Jenny Brown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Jenny's, Jenny's on the there. phone. Jenny's, she's, Jenny's. she's very disappointed that the balcony is closed because of the noise. Oh. <laughs> she's really, really angry. Yeah. Let's bring it. Maya, what's it going on? What's it going on? Is this good? One dog found. One dog found. Hello, Jenny. You want to come up there? No. No, no. Grumpy. So there's Maya. Hello, Maya. Oh. Let's see which cup Maya goes for. Yeah, this, which one? Yeah, which one? You gotta be, probably, probably gotta be careful with the uh, when they're brewed, right? Or or will they will they tiptoe around the the brewed cups? Uh, yeah, they're fine. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> let me check it to see what's what's in there. Uh, everything's quite quite good. So, so Ryan, uh, I commented on Petra's Instagram because their their company Naughty Dog finally carried a washed Ethiopian, and and they're doing they're doing this like a barrel aged. Um, uh, uh, I don't know what, what would you. It's not a process. But what would you call it? What oh, do you I do with this. what do you do with the yeah. coffee? It's barrel. It's barrel. It's not aged. It's like I'm not. It's like people. It's not aged in a so barrel. What, 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 yeah, cool. that's the wrong word. I know. We're, I know people. I never understood the barrel age thing. I, I, I don't know, <laughs> but it's stored in a barrel um, oh. that's that's had a long life, and it's, mm-hmm. I think we're at the end of its life. Uh, <laughs> but it's <laughs> wait. Are we are we still talking about the barrel right now? <laughs> yes, yes. The barrel, barrel. It's in the, it's in Jenny at the moment. Jenny barrel. But no, the interesting thing for me is that uh, it roasts so much better. Oh, the oh. The moisture level is increased. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Quite it, a lot. If, quite, we put, if we put 10 kilos in, it will increase almost half a kilo. Oh, wow. wow. So you're, you're effectively rehydrating the coffee, yeah. which, which uh, have you tried rehydrating green with just water? No, we do it with yeah, whiskey, yeah, do 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 whiskey <laughs> barrel instead. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, we've done it. Yeah, we do want to. Um, yeah. 
I when when I get the right coffee. Um, yeah, when, will, when you when you yeah. have a coffee that's old that you feel like has faded, it's worth doing. But it, it's not ever really worth doing with a fresh coffee, to be honest. But in, um, I, it, I'm shocked that it was um, Ethiopian washed. I had difficulty controlling the crash on it. Mm -hmm. Went in the barrel and, and nothing. Just mm -hmm. nice, mm -hmm. right, right, right. But yeah, I had to yeah, yeah. Get a little bit darker to reach the same color. Ah, okay, interesting. Yeah, no idea. So, well, you have you have to roast to a higher temperature, right? I have to. That's what I had to do. So, so that's what I'd like you to look at is 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 your environmental temperature reading at the end of the roast the same as it is on your on your non barrel treated coffee because. Because yeah. the when the when the color and temperature diverge, it's usually because the air temperature has shifted so much that it's influencing the bean temperature reading. Yeah, got it. All right, I'll do that. Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to see you this summer, and we, we might have to roast together for a while. That, 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 that would be, be very exciting. All right, cool. Uh, well, by popular demand, uh, I'm going to post my score sheet for this cupping onto the facsimile website, uh, facsimile.coffee slash previously, uh, where you'll also find uh, a link to this video with Guillaume and Petra, uh, as well as some more information about the coffees. So that will be available later today. Uh, and then uh, another note, we no longer offer a la carte of these coffees after the cupping. So if you want to get more coffee, I would recommend that you subscribe to one of the larger subscriptions. We have a duplicate, a triplicate. They go up pretty high. Uh, if you don't see the amount of coffee that you want, email us at hello at facsimile.coffee and we will get back to you. Um, and then as always, we really like getting feedback. So please send us your feedback. We love all types of mail, hate mail, love mail, everything in between. Uh, Willem, <laughs> Willem, it looks like you were about to say something. Are we ever going to see the roaster? See the Paolo. roaster? Oh, oh, yeah, for sure. One day we'll have Paolo on here. I think he should do a cupping. Oh, oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, Paolo. Yeah, Paolo, whether he knows it or not, or whether he agrees or not, he will be here. He will make an appearance. Yeah, for sure. He's yes. he's more than usually busy right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, great. So, right. uh, thanks everyone, Gwilym and Petra and Maya and Jenny Brown. Thank you so much for your time and your effort. Uh, really appreciate having you. It, this was fun. I I enjoyed learning about the six point cupping system. Uh, that's something I'm going to be thinking a lot about. Thank you. Well. Thanks very much. Thanks. Lovely to see you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.